How's with that? Let me look at that head wound a little more, okay? Nine, nine. Nine, nine. Shh. You just gotta get it. You just gotta get it. You will be alright. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm descended from the twelve healers. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Now, now that you're awake, that wound, mm hmm, that belly wound, I want to make sure it's not fatal. Mm hmm. So I need you to drink this broth. I've mixed it up leeks, onions, mm hmm. Visca, mm hmm. Nay. Nutele. Mm hmm. You talk a lot. <laughs> now listen. Listen here. Oh, let me look at your leg too. Don't move. I see it. I see it. I'm not as worried. I'm not as worried about the leg, you know. I'm more worried about the belly injury. Mm hmm. Well, you will see why. Okay, okay, I'm looking. Here I am. I'm looking at this leg. You need to calm down. You need to calm down. Wait. What would the king say? Nice. Don't worry about what the king would say. Worry about what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I have. I have here. Mm hmm. Ah, it's a little bit of blood. It's okay. I already wrapped it. I'll wrap it again. Mm hmm. People have come back from worse. Yes, they called a pause in the fighting. That's when I brought you in. Mm hmm. Do you remember the Iceland sagas? Do you remember Gisli? Mm -hmm. Well, you had a similar injury. He bound up his gut wound with his shirt. Mm -hmm. And he continued fighting for a long time. Yeah, I see. Well, you know us women always having something hanging from our brooches. Unless you're doing warrior business. Mm -hmm. And of course men are always having things on their belts. We always like to have our tools around us. That's a Viking thing, I think. That's just how we are. Mm -hmm. That's just how we are. Alright. I think the leg is okay. I need you to listen to me here. I need you to take this drink of leek. Mm -hmm. Well, because you see... I can tell if it's a fatal injury, if I can smell the leak coming out of the wound. That means that something inside is burst, something important. Mm -hmm. But if it does not, then I know it is not a fatal injury. I need you to drink this so we can make the preparations you need. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Here. Here you are. It's all right. All right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I'll just be tending to some of my chores here while you, while you rest. I'll be watching you. Now, Liz, you read Olaf's saga, yes? Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Oh, you cannot read. Ah, okay. Well, a warrior was wounded by an arrow in his side. He broke it off, kept fighting. The same remedy the healing women wanted to see, mm -hmm, to see if he would get better. But he refused. And instead, at the end, he pulled out the arrow 
and saw the fat from around his heart. <laughs> yes. I'm watching the lake. I don't think we have more bleeding. I think we're doing all right from that perspective. Mm -hmm. Well, what he did is he made the healing women cut him, uh, cut him until he could find the arrowhead, and they found it next to his heart. He pulled it out, and he said, "See how good the king keeps his men. Mm -hmm. Look at the fat on my heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah." Well, we have to see. And if you do, there are options in the afterlife. Absolutely. It has gotten complicated since now there's the mix of the Christianity and the old ways. Absolutely. But there is an afterlife of some kind. Yes, we all agree on that. Absolutely. Well, you know, politically, the politics lately is so interesting. Mm -hmm. It's affected my practice as a healer, of course. Yes. Are you finished? No. Oh, you haven't heard? Well, you know that back in the early 900s, mm -hmm, King Harold the Blue, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes, I'll just look here. I'll just look here to your leg. Honestly, I think you just want me to touch your leg. Nay. Nay. Nay, nay, nay. You can't think that way. You can't. Mm -hmm. Well, you cut me off before I could finish saying his name. <laughs> About King Harold, remember? When he converted, he decreed that all Vikings were now, all in Denmark anyway, were now going to follow the Christ away. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, you know, we usually do what the king does, even despite the thing. The thing is very democratic, but, you know, the king still has a lot of power. Well, this is the ultimate chieftain, really. Mm -hmm. You still have a fever. It's pretty normal, isn't it? That's how it was under the olden times. Which still really are. I mean, to say the politics here in Iceland is a little bit different, right? Because, mm-hmm. Well, so you haven't heard. There was going to be a battle between the Christians and the Odinites because the, you know, Regency from Denmark wanted there to be a change. But instead, they made the agreement that there would be in private, all of Icelandic Vikings. Well, it sounds like this is the new agreement with the new, mm -hmm. the new laws. Sounds like everyone will be doing Odinite worship in private, mm -hmm. and in public there will be Christianity. So will be both. They will have both things. <laughs> I don't know how honest that is, but it's better than a war. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going to change the dressing again. This has gotten a little bit bloody. Here. Well, it is what it is. I'm very glad that there was an agreement instead of a battle. Very interesting and strange here in Iceland. Well, yes, of course, because I'm sure some I'm sure some of them were happy because before that there were many Christians who were in minor outlawry. So, and then in other places there have been Odinites in outlawry. Mm -hmm. You don't study the laws very much, do you? Well, so as long as a minor outlaw continuously tries during the period of three years to find a ship, 
to find a ship away, they cannot be killed. But if they don't try once a year and ask, then they can be killed on sight and they will be shunned from everywhere. That's the minor outlaw. Yeah, nigh, nigh, nigh. Mm hmm. I'm excited to see you had a lot of plunder on you from your journey. You came off the ship just bleeding, though. Mm hmm. Let's look at some of them. So you can know you were successful before you die. Yeah. Well, of course. And how did she do? I know it was her first battle. Mm hmm. That's what's so different from us and the Saxons. Is their women really don't go into battle like ours do? And ours get buried with the same weapons? Maybe it's because we look more similar. <laughs> we're waiting. Why don't we look at axes? We've been doing a lot of chatting. But let's believe that you're going to live and let's look at some axes. I have a couple. I have a couple here. I had my sister bring me some. When I went out, I went to chat with her. This one. This would be good for hunting. It has a lovely handle, does it not? I know some of the Anglo-Saxons have us pictures of us where we have the giant double-headed axes. This one. Do you remember when Leif Erikson went to that new continent? Well, of course, we all know the stories. But one of the things that they had developed, those people, was an axe that is also a pipe. And they would blow in this pipe to symbolize um, peace. And they would sit together, they would smoke it, and that would be a treaty. Yeah. A little different from our treaties, but yes. But what I love about this axe is it is that, just like they have, they had it on their smaller weapons, the tomahawks. So this is something, obviously, Leif Erikson brought back a lot of interesting customs. I have not seen an axe like this anywhere else. And this is an idea that would work from those travels. Well, of course, because we Vikings were the first to discover that world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Accepting, of course, the people who already lived there. I suppose they had to discover it first, you're right. Yes. Yes, everything was very different. Language, everything. Not even different like the way the Anglo-Saxons were different, but different, different, more than that. But this is what they did for peace. But it's the other side of a war weapon. So it symbolizes strength. It symbolizes, I'm not surrendering. I'm making peace with you. I still have my weapon. I'm strong. But here I am with my peace pipe with you. I love this. I love this one. This is beautiful. I love the rosewood handle. It's really lovely. Mm -hmm. Well, if you like the smoking, but you want a different shape, this is a good one. This is good and big. Yeah. This is a good standard rosewood handle. With beautiful work up at the top. Mm -hmm. I'm always a little suspicious of etching on the blade because you never know how deep or if it's going to cause a weakness. But these are beautiful as well and they also are smoking axes. I love the olive wood. That's going to be expensive if you choose to get that one. This is walnut wood. This is perhaps the ideal for you. I love the back end there. That's an interesting new development, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, trop. Mm-hmm. Et trop dit. Yeah. All of this steel is Damascus. My sister has an eye for beauty, even though she is a violent hunter. Well, you see, because my sister knows the maker, she will give you 10% off. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It'll cost you, but it'll be 10% off. You just have to say her secret password. Her secret password is becoming 10. 
You have to say that when you go to the merchant, and he will know you're special, and you get the 10% off. I think he and my sister have a special understanding. I haven't seen them at the longhouse, but sometimes they go off alone. So, I think perhaps with their understanding. Well, if you've made your choice, you need to go down, you need to talk to them, make sure to tell them becoming 10. That will be your code, and you can get 10% off. You can get all the axes that your heart desires. You should get a special axe for yourself. You should get it because you're going to live, and you're going to want to hew wood, you're going to want to impress, mm -hmm. impress the opposite gender. <laughs> You're going to want to impress them. You're going to want to do a lot of things with these weapons. And of course you want to go to battle. If we end up continuing our raids, not stopping them. Well, of course, there was... Where was it he came? There was an Arab rider who came through to... I think it was Helwig? I'm not sure. I think his name was Ahmed ibn Fadlan. Fadlan. The names are difficult for me. Oh, poor dear, you're sweating again. I think so. Was he? No, he was he was made, meeting the explorers. So I met him on one of my expeditions when we were going off to the Russian steppes. That was years ago when I was doing the warrior thing. The thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But not anymore. I found I really like healing. Mm-hmm. That was when I met him, and he, and their men and their women, their women are more f um, fair featured, like more, more weak featured, not with the strong same cheekbones as we have. Mm -hmm. And their men, but their men are more strong featured. So with us, uh, you know, as you know, we have more, our women have a little more masculine, stronger features, and our men have a little more gentle features than they do. We're all more similar a little bit. <laughs> and then we all work together. Mm -hmm. But their women and men look more different from each other and, and, and from the women I saw there. That's where I got this. Of course, we don't do these. Vikings never do piercings, but I saw it on the Arab women, and I thought that was just so beautiful. And a piercing is easy for a Viking. It was easier than brushing my hair. My mother used to brush my hair and all the tangles, and she would tell me, she would tell me, you have to be tough like the other Viking warriors before you, and you cannot cry. And so I did not. <laughs> And it was much easier than this, much less painful than having my hair brushed by my mother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nine, nine, nine. Doska Ketele. That's my story. Mm -mm. Shh. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. That was even Fadlan. No, there was another visitor. Um. I don't remember when he came or where he came. I think he came to... He... I don't remember. Hold on. I'm preparing another herbal mixture here.
course wine, so it's good for healing. Someone who visited Hedby. He was a Spanish, a Spanish Arab. He visited Hedby. And he was talking about what were we talking about? I think were we talking about our makeup? He was saying they don't do makeup the same way we do, where we use the, the copper and to keep the sun out of our eyes and make us look younger. Hmm? Well, this, on one of the raids, I saw some of the Slavic um, warriors with colors. And obviously, we Vikings, we don't go in with colors. Our own faces are strong enough. We don't need all of that. But I did think it was beautiful. There's a long story. But there was someone I killed. Who I, the battle, the fight was amazing. He was. He was a powerful warrior. And he wore some colors. This was his color. And so, out of respect, I decided to make it mine. Mm -hmm. I know, I'm very strange. But with all the traveling, pick up some things. Like candles. I know we never use candles. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the oil, um, the lamp next to you, I'm going to light it. Mm -hmm. All right. But now these candles from the Anglo-Saxons. This one is beautiful, I think. So I haven't lit it. I know it is a waste. It is a waste when you can use oil lamps and you can use the beeswax that they use for candles. You can use it for metalworking for better weapons. Yeah. Nay. Yeah, easy. Yeah, can I don't know why they do those things, but different people do all kinds of different things. We prefer our way, but they also do not vote, the Anglo Saxons. I like that we can vote. I didn't ask I didn't ask even Fadlan about his voting. But I don't think they vote either. I don't think they have a thing. I don't think so. <laughs> Alright. Let's see. It's been a little while. Let's look at your belly here. I saw that your weapon broke during the battle. Yeah. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I will, Ed. And I'd like to get you a new one. Mm -hmm. Of course. You can talk, I'll just do my work here. Yeah. Hi. Oh, you like it? The cinnabar is so expensive. Red is such an expensive color. But the chieftains, you know, use it. And I think I am worth as much as a chieftain. <laughs> so. Yes, red, the color of blood. And then we have white, the color of life. Yeah. I think if we ever make a Danish flag, those should be the colors on it. That is a good question. I don't know why. Well, I think the reason... Well, this is what my mother told me. The reason white is the color of life is because of the milk. Because mother's milk. And I, my husband told me his mother told him it was a different color thing. I mean, not a different color thing, but a different thing that comes. The men version of a white thing. Mm -hmm. And that that's the reason it's light, it's white. I think our mothers tell us by, I think she told him because he was a man. And she told me different because I was a woman. <laughs> but, yes, the color of life, the color of the things that we produce that make life. Yeah. That's why. Life and power, redness, mm -hmm. boldness, bravery. Yeah. Duska had these things as a Viking. Mm -hmm. Duska. Yeah. You can't do otherwise. I won't tell. It's alright. You got a little bit worried at the beginning. But you have to listen to me. Or you'll end up like that gentleman. Well, he died when he pulled the fat out of his heart. Mm -hmm. He should have left it. If he wasn't bleeding so much. But, work on something here. Oh. 
that's a good question. Are you looking for healing stones? So you know that's illegal now. With the Gragas rulings. Mm -hmm. Well, I can see both sides of it. Listen, if there's no medical evidence that writing words on a stone doesn't cure people, it, it would be malpractice. Mm -hmm. So that's the law. That's why we have the law. I'm gonna go outside. I have to check something with the... with my cow. I have to check something with my cow. Mm -hmm. I'll be right back. Of course. I'll be right back. Well, of course, it's cold outside. It really is. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is what it is. So you're asking about the healing stones. You're not going to tell on me, are you? No. I'm going to change your bandage again, all right? Still a fair amount of blood. All right. Hold tight here. That doesn't hurt, does it? Good. Very good. Look, brother, you're going to be just fine. Whether you live or die, you'll be a Viking. That is a benefit over the world. <laughs> right? Because you can only go to Valhalla if you die in battle. But you can go to heaven just by having the other man die for you. I've read the texts, and I, of course, studied from my grandmother, our, the old, the old ways. So I understand both. I do. So I was saying, I, I, the, the healing stones are illegal. Because it's considered malpractice to not give someone a medication that could help them and instead give them a stone with writing on it. I can see that. I can see what you're saying. That even if it doesn't work, it's nice to be able to do it for religious purposes. But as a healer, if it's my responsibility not to kill someone, I should probably use the thing that has the most, that has been, that works the most. That's the question, is they, they say the healing stones don't work, and relying on them even for cattle is illegal now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see that. It is a pity, there are fewer and fewer female healers now. That is a change with the, with the particular kind of Christianity, mm -hmm. the Catholic. Mm -hmm. So there are more male healers now. But I'm descended from the twelve first healers, the twelve famous ones. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so I'm gonna tell you a secret. I have a premonition. I think that my family will continue to be healers, and I will have a descendant, maybe Hraf, name him Hraf. Oh yeah. I'm a little worried about the leg becoming, sometimes they become black and the pus comes out and then people often die. Mm -hmm. So there are herbal concoctions that sometimes can prevent that. Mm -hmm. Anti, they're anti-gangrene, we could say. Mm -hmm. I'm actually thinking, let me get one of my books here. I'm thinking because I have a copy, it just came out. Um, we took it in one of the raids from the 
Saxons. Mm -hmm. But it just came out. Bard's Book of Medicine, I think it is. Let me see. Let me see the book. I know I have it here somewhere. Where could it be? Where could it be? Let's see here. Is I'm going to reach over you. Take a look. Let me take a look here. Let me take a look here and see. Well, let's see. Some bile. This recipe. Mm -hmm. Well, so this recipe from Bald's Leech Book, I'm thinking, it's, it's used to prevent that condition, but in the eye. I was thinking, I was thinking, because I don't have the materials for some of the other concoctions, but I was thinking I have the materials for this one. And if it works, I have a theory that something, something bad, I don't know what it could be, a creature, a spirit, something bad, sometimes gets in some of these wounds. Mm -hmm. And it gets in them less if they stay clean, mm -hmm. so we try to keep it clean. And it it make it causes this. It eats the it eats the flesh. And the, that thing, this concoction, I think kills that thing in the eye. And I would like to try it here, because I have the materials. I don't have the materials for some of the other. May I try that? Well, now, of course, you don't have a choice. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that is true. There are laws that protect a leech or a healer if they have to do a surgery or if they have to take blood that they will not be faulted for that. That's also in the law to protect them. I do think it depends on the, how much blood you take. I think in this state, you need to keep your blood. <laughs> Dina Bluth, yeah. 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 Yeah, this cake. A yeah, cake. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, but I think this concoction, this concoction could work. So, let's see. It's. It's really a solve for a win, mm -hmm. but I think I think that it's the same little thing, animal, demon, whatever, that gets in. So that begs the question of the difference between medicine and magic, and that is really why the healing stones are a question, right? I agree. Is it because it's not modern? You know, our most modern medicines are to do surgery, to bind things up, mm -hmm. to take out and remove things that have become gangrenous. Mm -hmm. Well, there was a gentleman, there was a great warrior, uh, not long, not recently in one of the sagas, who was cut so badly his lungs fell out of the cavity, but they bound him up and the lungs weren't damaged. They bound him up. He took an entire summer to get better, but he did get better because the inside wasn't damaged. That's what we're checking in you. Is this something in the inside damaged, or is it just the husk that's holding the vital life force? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I will smile no matter what. You should too. You should too. Mm hmm. You are a Viking after all. Of course. So yes, you had asked about... You're very curious about the healing stones. Do you want one? Now listen, I'm talking about magic and medicine. I have checked. I have read the older texts. They seem to come from Jews, really. If you read carefully the Kliste, he was Jewish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in the first part of the books, 
when it talks about magic and says that a necromancer or a sorceress must be put to death, it lists the kinds of magic that are forbidden, and healing stones are not forbidden there. Mm -hmm. So I understand the law to protect patients, to protect our patients. And if that's the goal, that's a worthy goal. But if it's because of Christendom, it doesn't, it wouldn't make sense. Because the kinds of magic that are forbidden, forbidden, mm -hmm, they are, if I remember correctly, let's see, I have another book here. Let's see, I have, oh, I have it right here. Well, we'll give you some wine in a bit. This is one. That my husband brought back from one of his raids. Yes. This is from one of mine. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. These are from one of mine. And the candle is from one of mine from before we married. This, mm -hmm, he became wealthy enough to get me a neck ring. Something we did during those travels. We, the, the Viking men who had obtain the most loot or gold would purchase rings for the women so Miss Um had many, many, many neck rings mm -hmm. of course I think everyone is doing it now, it's very fashionable but this is one of his we're just passing the time until the leak comes out <laughs> you can hold it, yes Good marksmanship. I'm sorry, but good craftsmanship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're interested in the make on the bottle. I think it's pewter. Which is not as strong as the metals that we work with, but it's beautiful nonetheless. Thank you, I'll take that back. And of course clay. Doing a lot of working in clay. I think that it is here. I this one. I took this right off of a prince. Mm -hmm. It's a lovely circlet, isn't it? I keep and give it to my husband sometimes, and I wear it in my victory. Yeah. Well, we have what we have. The rating has decreased on them. But let me see, I have this. I have this book. And in here. In here, I believe. Ay, ay, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, isn't it? a dragon. I think they have a list. Right, so blood magic was forbidden. It was forbidden to do divining with sticks. Necromancy was forbidden. And it was forbidden to talk to the dead. A few things. Healing was never forbidden of any kind. And stones are not forbidden. There is a place in the Mishle. There is a place where it says that um, giving a bribe is like binding a stone. But that sounds more like talking about how effective it is than how wrong it is. But who knows? <laughs> it's never expressly forbidden. So. If you won't tell on me, I can break the law for you. Yeah, I have my own arguments for everything. <laughs> of course. Let me get this back here. Yeah, I like to keep everything where it is, where it belongs. <laughs> Of course, nigh. 
ないないないないないいつもジャブいつもライドゥイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエイエ It was a productive radius. Ah. This looks Phoenician. Ah, no, those are fishermen. My brother, mm -hmm, my brother did that. You know, my brother saw a drogger when he was out fishing. He did. He's a prankster, he is. He hit it in the back. This was when he was raiding in the Saxon territories in the England. He hit it in the back and then he ran as fast as he could. Because, of course, you never know what an undead being is going to do. He hit it and he ran. It's strange the joggers are always bad people, good people never. Mm hmm. It's always the cruel or the angry.、Mm -hmm. He told me of an English story of a woman whose husband became a drogger and came back and was lying on top of her. He was exceedingly heavy and it was difficult for the townspeople to keep him buried.、Mm -hmm. I wonder sometimes, because the accounts that I hear of the droggers, it sounds like they look like the, the gangrene. That I worry about. I wonder if they perhaps were not dead, were not quite dead, and had bad infection. I don't know. Infection. I say that to mean that thing. It doesn't mean anything. Yes. And I don't know what causes it. I still. Like I said, maybe something living gets in there and makes it, or maybe not. There's a Greek, there's some Greek texts. Again, we brought back a lot from the last. Where there's some Greek texts that say it's an imbalance of the humors. That when your humors are out of balance, that is what occurs. So, it could be that. It could be that that could be causing it. We have to work with the best knowledge we have, with what we, we can test. I believe in testing everything, and if we can test it, it works. I like that. Mm hmm. That's why I like this leech book, this Anglo leech book.、Mm -hmm. Because all of the recipes have been tested and practiced.、Mm -hmm. And so somebody tested it and found it worked. It's very popular. So I'm trying it. Trying it myself. So I think that this concoction will do well for you. Let me get to work a little bit. It has garlic in it. The onion, yes, bile. So I have that as well. Wine. And then I need to put it in a copper vessel. I notice copper. Copper seems to get dirty less or in a different way. Again, if there's some living evil thing, and maybe that's my magical thinking, and maybe that's not allowed. We're not supposed to think of magic, but I think there's a living evil thing that gets in people and makes them sicker. I think it's very small and we can't see it. But if that living evil thing cannot live on copper, maybe. Who knows? I do think, I think that we're healthier than the Anglos because of our baths. They laugh. Because we take regular baths and our men groom themselves. Of course. Well, of course. Let me get you, while you're waiting, 
so that you can live or die in style. Let me get you some grooming materials. I'm sorry. Let me get you a comb. Excuse me. There you are. And of course you'll wash your own hair. Yes. When my husband married me, he did the same thing that they do in the sagas where he promised never to let another woman wash his hair. Mm -hmm. Just like the great warriors in the sagas. Exactly. Well, I appreciate it, of course. Oh, yes. Well, and like you said in the one saga, when he wouldn't even leave, he wouldn't even leave without, he wouldn't even leave for war without bathing and having his wife wash and cut his hair. And his commander agreed, because it's important, you can't go into battle without looking good, of course, and being clean. And I believe there's a spiritual, I think it protects you. I think the ritual of it protects you. Because I notice that those who make sure to bathe regularly, they have less of this, you know, deadly change that can occur. Mm -hmm. So, maybe there's something spiritual, the water. Yes, I've noticed that. The Clistin people care a lot about the water as well, both Odinites and Clistonites do. Mm -hmm. Water is valuable, yeah. So maybe it's something magical in the water. Again, the boundaries between magic and medicine, I think that they are slim. So, of course. Yes. Now, now let me keep working here. Oh, yes. And you found that too? I think that's why the Anglo-Saxon women always prefer our men. Of course. Everyone wants a Viking man. He's clean. He's handsome. He has gentle features. Mm -hmm. He doesn't smell. Oh, yes. In the year 907, the treaty, before we came... Um, so I did... I told you I did some work over with the uh, other Rus Vikings in the Baltic area. Mm -hmm. I told you I did some work there. Well, there's an old treaty that promises that they have to provide us and our warriors as many baths as we desire. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, other people groups, they don't do this. But I believe it's part of what gives us our power. You know what's awful, though? There were Anglo-Saxon... Anglo-Saxon... pigs. Excuse me, that's not very kind. <laughs> that's not kind. We were in their land, after all. I've become a little more gentle and of more perspectives as a healer now. But still, they attacked. There was a general of theirs who got in the habit of attacking every time he knew it was bath time because he knew our warriors would be indisposed. That's not gentlemanly. Well, and we even stopped fighting for the wounded for a while before resuming. It's a matter of honor. But, of course, they didn't want us in their area. So, I noticed that the weak or the disadvantaged often have different versions of honor. And maybe that is there. This is something different with the Christendom than the Odin beliefs. I used to think, well, if you're weak, then you're weak and you're nothing. After all, you're not going to Valhalla if you don't have, if you don't die in battle. So you have to at least have that spirit. Mm -hmm. Or die in childbirth. You have to have that spirit. But there's passages, too, in the new ways, talking about weakness being strength. 
Still, I think it's a dishonorable thing to attack someone during their bath. What do you think? What do you think of all these politics? Where are you? And I'm not going to tell on you. I don't tell on any anyone if you're practicing something in public or something that I don't. I don't, I don't do that. I'm a healer and I keep things secret. <laughs> yes, the Greeks have an oath about that for healers. There's a lot of interesting information from them. And a lot of the new Catholic medicine has come from the Greeks. But I think there's some things off. I, the balance of the humors I have noticed with the new medicine, people sometimes die faster when they lose the blood, to balance the blood. I don't know. I don't know. So, it may be true that the stones don't work, but I don't think the bleeding works. I'm not sure. In your case, anyway, please keep your blood. I think, I think I don't need it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's always so. That's another thing is they don't live in the whole family in one house like we do. So they're different about nakedness. They're different about... They're more prudish about sex. Mm -hmm. Well, because we all live in the same area. <laughs> the same long house. Of course. Don't you never get lonely? And if you want to be alone, you just go to your bunk. Put some blankets over your head. Shut up. Mm -hmm. Don't whine about it. Harold Bluetooth in 965, yes. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Well, it's a tricky thing, our gods. We, we have... I see good and bad coming. I'm sad that there are less female healers now, but on the other hand, it is good that we've changed the practice of exposing infants. That was a very common thing that we have always done, but I believe every infant should be given a chance. I think, and it's a cruel way to die, to die by exposure. So I'm glad that's changed. I don't like the new humor blood medicine as much. But sometimes something does need to come out. I had a relative with a big wen. Well, not a wen because it wasn't in the eye, but a big lump. And they were getting sicker and sicker and sicker. When I cut it open, all of this yellow fluid came out. And then they got better. So there is something to the Greek... Again, I wonder if maybe something's living in there that needs to leave. And it's not the blood that's bad, it's the thing that could be living there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's a funny thing. Things we fight each other over. Well, of course it makes sense. Because these are real. These are questions of Mm -hmm. Well, because if you truly believe that Odin, the All-Father, is supreme, well, of course, you will fight. Yeah, I think our way of thinking maybe makes us want to fight more. But I think we're fighting less, actually, than some of the other peoples in this area. Mm -hmm. Because if it's real, you want to fight for it. You don't want to be a coward. Even if it's not true that you must die a warrior to go to Valhalla, we all still feel it in our souls. We all still feel, you must fight, and if you don't die fighting, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. I think even the Clistin people, yeah, just because we're Vikings above anything else, so we'll feel that, we'll want that, we'll be that. So, but you're right. We did stop. We did prevent the fighting compared to other people groups. <laughs> We've made our deals. 
our little deals and our laws and our things and voting. Absolutely. Yes, I would have my key hanging here, but I don't need to I have it hanging over there. Exactly. Oh yes, so he was, he says that when he was in the Anglo territories, he went running, he hit this dragger that he saw sitting on this barrel. And he went running away from it at top speed. And as he ran away, um, the dragger was catching up to him. He jumped over barrels and he knocked things over. And he, um, he ran through a cemetery and he started calling all the Christian dead to come up and help him. And they dragged the auger down and kept him buried. I don't know if it's true. My brother tells strange stories. But if it is true, then these changes certainly make a difference. I have my suspicions because when I was reading the older Christian texts, again the part where I found out that they were Jude, that the 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 Christa was a Jude, when I found this out as I was reading these things, because I study for my medicine and I wanted to see if the law was matching that and that's where the law came from. But it looks like not. It looks like the law came from a concern for malpractice or something because it's not in there. Or perhaps somebody read it wrong. Who knows? The law against the stones. I'll do them for you. If you really want, I'll do a stone for you. I can do a rune stone. Of course. Mm. Well, we can look into it. Let's see how you do with the modern treatment. And then we'll look into stones. And I will tell you what I know about some of the ancient stones. Because there's stones in these scriptures too. Mm. Absolutely. All the politics is very strange now. It tires me out a little to speak it. It makes me a little sad. It's hard to know who's doing the right thing and who's doing the wrong thing in these days, but, <laughs> and I am excited, I'm excited to see what tomorrow brings. And of course, if I don't like something, I'll just use my own axe and get rid of it. You have to have an axe in case somebody comes trying to tell you what you need to think. It's good to have an axe. <laughs> of course, it's their prerogative to do that. And it's my prerogative to cut off their arm. Well, we're Vikings. What do you expect? Just don't get yourself in trouble. Ask questions, but have a good axe to help you with all your questions and all your thoughts.